name is Haley Graves, and today I am joined by Pastor Kelly McCoy, and he is the pastor of the college and young adult group here at Rocky Peak. Kelly, I'm so excited to have you here today. Me too. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. That's awesome. Well, today we're going to be talking about a question that I think it's on everybody's mind, and that is sex. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but like sex is kind of everywhere in the media and right. billboards and just everything. So what would you say to young people uh, just about that topic and about how prevalent it is hmm. and how to be approaching that from a biblical perspective? Yeah, how to approach sex from a biblical perspective. Well, first, like I understand where this question comes from because we are completely saturated. Uh, in a, we are in a sex-saturated environment. Uh, and it's actually so, we're so saturated by sex that it's like, it's not even something that registers to us. Like even with like young kids to adults, like we see billboards, we see commercials, we see, um, you know, advertisements that are constantly alluring us mm -hmm. with sexual images and sexual um, content where it just becomes part of our daily vocabulary. Right. And, um, and so having a biblical understanding, I think, is really important, at least for, for the person who considers them a Jesus follower. Right. Right. If someone's not a Jesus follower, like, this is not necessarily, like, the, a big concern because sex is just uh, a physical activity. Right. It's just, like, working out that's really fun or something. <laughs> it's a really good workout. Um, <laughs> But, but for the Jesus follower, we acknowledge that sex is not just physical, but it's also spiritual. Right. And so if there's a spiritual component to sex, then what is that spiritual component? And how do we really unpack that? And I feel like uh, the Bible addresses that. I mean, okay. you know, if I wasn't a Jesus follower, I'd be like, what is up with the big deal? Well, like, mm -hmm. what's the big deal? Yeah with these Christians, like, like holding out till marriage, like, why would you wait for a contract to have sex? Like, you know, and, and um, love is love, right? That's exactly. And, you know, and love in the expression of sex, of course, is, is something that, you know, people want to experience. And I, I, I would just say that, that, that God has intended for humans to have a very, um, to just have a broader connection with one another. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, call, I call it a 3D relationship. God wants all of humans to have a three-dimensional relationship, and that's physical, emotional, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. So each dimension, so a physical relationship, uh, uh, an emotional a relationship, and then a spiritual relationship with, with especially if you, if you plan on getting married, or, if you, or even if you just want true community, it's gonna happen in, in three dimensions, mm -hmm. you know, physically, uh, emotionally, and spiritually. And so when it comes to sex, the Bible uses the word sex or uses the concept of having sex in the context of marriage. So Kelly, I mean, you, you, you've, you've got married. You're now in the, the happily ever after right. phase yes, of it, right? Yes, that's what marriage is. <laughs> um, so, what would you say to someone who, like me, who's like in their early 20s and does hope to be married one day, but they are single? Like what would, and that can be so, if we're honest, so painful. Yeah. Um, so what would you say to somebody that you wish you had known when you were in yeah. that yeah. phase of life? Yeah. Well, first of all, the, the same way that God provided for Adam in the garden, God's going to provide for you. And, and... And God made Adam wait a long time. So long that he had enough time to name all the animals in the garden. <laughs> Think about that, right? And so year after year, um, imagine year after year, bunny, gorilla, giraffe, like, oh, what's this? Oh, octopus, platypus, like, whoa. <laughs> like, just year after year, like Adam's longing for companionship, God took that and stretched it out. Mm -hmm. I think so often we look at that that longing, that, that having to wait as like a bad thing, right? And I think that that's what society feeds off of, Thinks right? it's a bad thing, yeah. but what, what God was actually doing was preparing him to appreciate mm -hmm. the, the provision that God had for him when he finally put him to sleep, when he was at rest, and gave him something that he couldn't possibly imagine. God wants to take your desire and make it so that you can appreciate his best for you. But that only comes with waiting. And I think what, what God's intention for marriage is to be a living example of his love 
for us. Mm. Right? God's intention for marriage is literally for my marriage my marriage with my wife is to be a living example of how God loves humanity. And so that's like showing compassion, showing grace to one another, working to achieve a common goal. Like my wife and I, we work together to establish a home where people can come and feel safe and receive counsel and also receive lots of really good food because she's an <laughs> awesome cook. It's true. It's true. It's true. But ultimately, um, I think our society hypes up, set, hypes up marriage to the point where like this is the end goal. That's why every fantasy TV show or every fantasy uh, Disney character, it all ends in marriage and then they live happily ever after. Well, what does that look like? What happens after the happily ever after? This whole time Snow White is trying to figure out like who she wants to marry, whatever. And then it ends mm -hmm. because they meet each other? No, that's the beginning. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a living example of God's love for the church. Kelly, thank you so much um, for sitting down today and talking and encouraging not only me, but all of the viewers who will be watching this.